Hi, I'm Lynn Langett. Today I'm going to talk about Google Cloud Platform Data Management with CloudBerry Lab. To get us thinking, I want to talk about this question of cheap cloud storage. And why it's a question is with the prices going down to nearly zero for both hot storage, so in this case for Google Cloud Platform, for cloud storage, or cold storage or archival with the announcements around Nearline, uh, new customers can store petabytes for basically nothing um, in the Google Cloud Platform. How can we as architects help our customers to manage that data at low cost? It's interesting because although the storage services themselves cost nearly nothing, there is a cost around management and tooling. So one of the solutions I've had really good success with, and I'm going to show you in some detail here, is from CloudBerry Lab. Now CloudBerry Lab makes cloud storage tools and has a number of different solutions. But for this screencast, I'm going to take a closer look at CloudBerry Explorer for the Google Cloud. Do note they have a lot of different products that integrate with cloud storage. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and go to their website. And I'll click on Products. And then I'll click on For Google Cloud. And we will be starting with the CloudBerry Explorer for Google Cloud. And note that it does support Nearline. Now this does require a Windows machine. And there's two versions. You can have the freeware or the pro. And the pro has a trial. And then afterwards it's 40 bucks. Now instead of just reading through all these features, I think it's just going to be more interesting if I just show you the product. But in order to use the product, you have to have an account on the Google Cloud. So let me just briefly take you through that if you're new to this. So you would just go to cloud.google.com and then you would sign in and then you would set up an account. Um, if you are starting, as with all the cloud providers, they have many services that you can try basically for nothing. So notice they are now featuring Nearline, which was announcement this week. And if we click on Nearline, they explain in detail between the different types of storage that they have. In particular, they're highlighting uh, Nearline, which is their archival storage. To get set up with the Google platform, you would log in with your Google account, and then you would click on My Console. So over in My Console, I'll create a project called Demo CloudBerry, and I'll associate that to a billing account. And then while that's creating, I'll launch the CloudBerry Explorer. Now what I've previously done is I've downloaded this and unzipped it. Once you do that, then you can log in with your email and you'll have a 15 day trial. And I'm using the pro version here. Now you can see I did some testing previously. So I'm gonna to go to home and it gives you a lot of different information about the product. And then I'm gonna go over to the new tab. And the new tab, I've got my computer and I'm at the root. And I've already set up a connection to a Google storage account, but I'm going to do it again just so you guys can see how it works. So you go over to File, and you can connect to the new Google Cloud Storage or Google Drive, just informationally. And you put the display name, so I'll call this a demo, and then the project ID. Now you find the project ID inside of the project right here. So it's just demo CloudBerry. It's the same name. So I'll copy that and paste that here, making sure that I don't have the space. And then I'll test the connection. I'll accept the permission request, and I'll see that the connection was successful. And I'll click OK. So now I have two different connections because I made this other one previously. I'll say close. And in my dropdown over here, I can now select my demo connection. Again, I accept the permissions the first time. And inside of here, I don't have any containers. Now the way containers work for storage is they are called buckets. Now if I click here and I make a new bucket, kind of analogous to a drive on the um, uh, local machine, and I'll call this one first one. And notice I can put it in US, um, Europe, or Asia. And this is a really interesting aspect of this tool. I can use the different types of storage. So for Google Cloud, you've got standard, you've got dur durable reduced availability, which is cheaper, and then you have Nearline. So let me first make a standard, and that's giving me a naming conflict. So let me make a more unique name, Demo 
July 24. And there's my demo July 24. Now, if I wanted to perform a basic file operation, like uh, copy some files to the cloud, um, one of the things that's so great about this tool is that you can leverage uh, what your users already know. So let me just pick something here that's, uh, let me pick something that has some data in it. There we go. And this folder has some data in it. Okay, so I'm gonna just go uh, back up. And then I'm gonna simply click on it and drag it over here. And just like a file copy in Windows, what you're actually doing is you're putting your data up into this bucket in the Google Cloud. And an interesting aspect of this is you have some tools inside of this tool that can help you to learn even more about what's happening. I really like showing this to my enterprise customers so they can understand really how cheap it is with their own data and how fast it goes. So you can see the cost, the time, um, and the traffic. So it's um, really easy to uh, use this tool. And um, here's my data really fast. Now, in addition to this, of course, we could go, I'm going back up here, and we could make a bucket of a different type. So we could say, demo nearline July 24th, and we could use nearline and say OK. And that's your archival storage. Now again, what's beautiful about this tool is you can just click right over here and put it into nearline which really for many of your users they are not going to really want to know or care about um, the mechanics behind the archival or the regular storage you can just give the proper names and they can just click and drag additionally if you go into here you can see if I right click on one of these files let me just pick any old thing here you have your familiar file options but they're of course specific to what can um, be performed in the Google Cloud they're going to be different than, uh, for example, like I have upload rules, for example. And I'll just show you what that looks like. That shows you um, when you are uploading. You can, again, take advantages of some of the cloud capabilities, compression, encryption, so on and so forth. You can say um, which buckets, which types of files. Um, you know, again, it takes the options around this cloud storage tool and makes it super, super easy to use. So let me go back up here. And let me go over here and make a change to uh, one of these files here. So let me just take this and delete it and say yes. And let me go in here and say open. Let me make this style sheet. And again, I'm just making breaking changes. I'm being a dumb developer. <laughs> and say save. Okay, now if I go back up and I click here. Another capability of this product that's really interesting is I can click and type here to do um, synchronization or comparison of folders. So sync folders, um, you can add sync folders and you can say where you want to sync from and to. So again, it's a great capability that we're used to with desktop storage that now we can use with commercial cloud storage. Um, and you can see that you've got uh, all these options that reflect what is possible and what users want to do. You know, which way you want to sync, um, if you want to include subfolders, if you want to use um, uh, hashing, um, so, and then you can uh, exclude some folders or files. So, super cool. And then you can just do a quick compare as well. So, if I click compare and I say compare now, um, it's going to then show you what is um, missing or changed or whatever. And if I say include subfolders, now we get a much more sophisticated view. So we'd say these are equal, you know, these things are not there, um, and this is comparing the whole, everything in this whole sample data. And of course, we only copied one folder. You can change the sync direction. It's a really easy interface, and then you can just sync if you want to. So it, you know, gives the uh, familiarity of the Windows Explorer interface to working with the cloud. Now, in addition to this, there's other capabilities around um, backing up your files that CloudBerry offers. So uh, I haven't set all these up, but I'll just show you what it looks like. If I click on Schedule Backup, then you can do um, a scheduled backup um, that now is supported by the Google Cloud Storage as well. Let's see, where is this? 
Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so I'll just show you what the screenshots look up, look like. So it's basically it does an automation of the backing up, and this is now supported within the Google Cloud as well. So you would then just work through this interface and um, say where you wanted to back up to, and how you wanted to back up. Again, you have it's very um, English like dialog boxes, so a non-technical user could could use this and take advantage of the super cheap cloud storage. Say what you want to back up. And uh, again, just like I kind of showed you the synchronization, you can say which folders, what to skip, uh, compression and encryption, uh, purge options, scheduling options, and then pre and post backup options. So just to wrap up, the Cloudberry Explorer for Google Storage Pro Edition, I find to be a very valuable tool. Let me just, I guess, go back over here and super easy to use, uh, allows my customers to get even more value out of the Google Cloud. So this is Lynn Langett, Google Cloud Developer Expert. Have a great day.